And we can build some other stuff again. Um, I would like to get a fort down here. Though it will put us very slightly over... You know what? I am going to take this one down. Because this is still going to protect that pass. No, because that's in the hills. We do want a hill defense look. No. You know what? If we need to strategic fortifications, we can worry about the strategic fortifications at that point. Okay, then the next thing that we need to do... And this is one of the downsides to playing as Rome, because we've already got a fairly large country and I don't really know how to deal with this. But we have settlement buildings. They cost 132. And we're going to want to decide where we want, like, barracks, slave estates, mines, farming settlements, tribal settlements, and provincial legations. Because that's going to allow us... Huzzah! To start upgrading these locations to do various important things. Cool sign Slinky, thank you very much for the ongoing support. Coming in with a 28-month resubscription. Thank you so much for the ongoing support. Really appreciate that. And thank you also for all the work you do as a moderator, of course. Being subscribed for 28 months. Now that's soldiering. Now that is indeed soldiering. Nice sharp reference there, I approve. Insurrectionist sent to jail. <laughs> Preposterous. Ah, oh, too soon, too soon. Hopefully you don't cancel the fortress, you just pause it. So I have brought in 12, uh, 10,000 men against their 12. With reinforcements, we have more. So it's my 2,000 infantry versus the 2,500. I have chariots, they don't. We have a lot more light infantry. They have archers. So they have light infantry and archers mixed together. But we have 111% discipline and also a higher military technology. We're actually winning this fight very easily. Cool. They lost 7,400. We lost 2,400. So it looks like we've actually done a relatively decent job of, like, building up our armies. Um, yeah, you take that. That's fine. You can sort the macro builder by value gain now. That is useful. at all. The only thing that is actually useful in terms of giving some numbers at least is the manpower stuff. Um, well, in that case, I think what we need to do is sort this by trade goods and then basically just say, right, we want to upgrade the trade goods in these locations. 
So what are we going to need a lot of? Well, we are going to need a fair amount of grain to actually feed this location. Because I'm expecting the capital's population just to go through the roof. Gonna change you to farming. Horses, iron. I mean, the iron we probably want to mine here. But this is somewhat dependent on, like, how many slaves and things you have. And that's really where the micromanagement starts to come in. Ah! Roam freely. Sacking is done. Why'd their colour just change? Oh, you know what? We could actually have this force head down to Ostia to jump on the ships. In fact, uh, we should probably just send a small force overseas. I don't think we'll need the big one. How big a force are you? Actually, you know what? Sod it. We'll send the big unit. And we'll keep you nearby. Because these can carry one unit each, right? Is Imperator Rome similar to Stellaris, the pop mechanics? Not really. It's closer to Victoria. And, and yet still different. Like, the different pops have different types of output. So slaves do most taxing, uh, most taxation. Tribesmen are mostly in tribal areas. Um, freemen do mostly manpower with a little bit of tax. Citizens do tax with a little bit of research. And the nobles do just research. Um, these button highlights are not very good. Grey versus slightly darker turquoise? Eh. Where's Embark? Ten ships is too small, so how many are needed? Oh, that's where the experience is shown. It is one per unit, so if I split you again, I forgot that each of these units was basically 500 men instead of 1,000 now. That's just one of the changes kind of catching me out. It has come to our attention that a substantial amount of state food stockpiles in the province of Campania have seemingly disappeared overnight. The whereabouts of these supplies is still debated. Some claim a group of assertive Sinesian uh, merchants swindled an incompetent clerk. Others that a vengeful god spirited them away in anger. In any case, the reserves are severely diminished. Quintus is responsible. Um, considering how important these guys are, I don't think I'd ever going to say, like, you are directly responsible because that is a way of losing loyalty. We could just buy it back. Costs us a bit of money. It increases his loyalty. Heads will roll. We gain tyranny. We actually can do that. We have the tyranny to spare. Roll those heads along the floor. Make a game out of it. Okay, so let's get you guys moving to here. These are mercenaries. They have not been hired. They're just there. We shouldn't fight them. And then, here we go. Grumentum uh, grows from relative humility into a true Lucanian city. While it still has some way to go before it can rival the great cities of our age, the past two years have ushered a new era of growth and urbanization in this territory. And you're right. The good did change to a manufactured good. So it went from livestock to cloth. These are the best of times. It's 
See you, Miss Donnie. Oh, we just fought their navy and actually captured a ship. Heck yeah. Do you actually have a jet? You do. Good. Yes, of course, it would give a pop-up if there was no Admiral here. Uh, let's go to Ostia. You'll almost certainly repair quicker from there. This fort is taking its sweet time. There it is. So if I wanted... <laughs> See, look, the territories you can't take, same colour as the territories you can and are taking. Some of the UI things in this game are still really bizarre. I think it might just be because we're red. Oh yeah, we can take this as well. Nine aggressive expansion. What is my aggressive expansion at the moment? And more importantly, where would it show that? Oh, that's AE. Okay. I thought it might be up there, but I didn't realise it was that. And that's War Exhaustion. Okay. You know what, I think I'm going to wait until they piece out these guys and then just see if we can take everything. Scientific breakthrough. One of our researchers, Marcus Junius Lepidus, thinks he is about to make a notable scientific breakthrough in the research he is currently working on. All that is needed is some more supplies and funds for the next couple of years. To be able to get his hands on some of these, he has personally asked our consul, Lucius Papirius Cursor, if he can gain access to them. The rest of the researchers would certainly suffer if we were to make this move, but maybe it is worth it after all. Marcus will get everything he needs. He gains 85% progress. I mean, that is a lot of progress. But then for 10 years, he reduces the amount of research he does. I don't know if that's necessarily worth it. Am I going to take Pompeii? I think we have it already. Having played many Paradox games, never tried Imperato, how would I rate it contrary forward? I say it's worth starting up buying and all that, or is it just better to play around with the four mods and such? Ah! Lots and lots of people are asking for my opinion on this, and it's really difficult to state an answer. Because I still feel like I'm in the early game, so it's too early for me to say definitively yes or no. Um, because previously my answer would have been, if it's in a sale, sure. I think my answer would still be, if it's in a sale, sure. I definitely wouldn't definitively say yes. Um, it's improved. It's got a lot better. I really like the levy system. I do think that combat is now a lot more enjoyable than it was. I do still kind of wish I could assign individual commanders to the levy armies and just limit me to the number of armies that that levy can raise. 
but there are still a couple of things which are janky, like some of them which I'm pretty sure will just get fixed in a patch or two. For example, the fact that these banners aren't the right size. Like, you can see how it's highlighted and you can see where my mouse is. Like here, I'm still clicking on the banner. No, I'm oh, still clicking on the flag. No, I'm actually on the, the, the header of the banner. Whereas here, I am actually on the flag. So it's, it's, it's just a uh, click area issue. That's easily fixed. Some of the other things, like trade, I still really don't like trade. I'm happy you can automate it. It's unfortunate that it has to be automated. Um, but clearly they've added automation as a way of saying, yeah, we realize this system sucks. But then again, like Victoria's trade is technically automated too, so it's not the end of the world, it's just a bit unfortunate. How do you automate trade? So if you go to the Nation Overview, Administration, Provinces, and then you just make sure that these are all on just the vase. And then all of that is now automatic. And in fact, we should be switching these to Cultural Assimilation. We're trying to roman romanize all of this as much as we can. Um, I'm not going to give him this stuff. I don't think that's worthwhile. No. And there was something else I was saying very recently was a bit janky. Like, they've tried to update the macro builder, but it's not that useful. I think that's more of just a function of how the trade system in this game works. The numbers are too big. Like, reducing the number of slaves required to make one trade good. Especially at, like, the early game. Not really relevant. Later on, once you actually have bigger burgeoning populations, it is. Um, and then there are some really nice features. Like, I genuinely like the mission tree here. It's more interactive. Each mission itself has its own, like, tree attached to it. So this is just uh, the Roman Italia missions. Once we've completed these, then we'll get another one with its own tree in it. That's kind of cool. The way that your military can change depending on which traditions you've taken, that's pretty cool. It gives you more customization. Um, the levies, as I said again, is definitely this game's strongest point. So the, the troops that you can raise through levies changes to, uh, depending on what cultures you have present. So, as Rome, if I was sticking with the Italian tribes as opposed to Romanizing everyone, I would have more, um, like, cavalry. But because I'm Romanizing everyone, I'm going to get more light and heavy infantry. Uh, similarly, if I conquered Greece, then the levies I got from Greece would be mostly heavy infantry, because they're the phalanxes. If I conquered Egypt, then most of my levies would be camels, etc. That's a really cool system, um, which is determined by your game actions, and I think that's important. So some of the stuff that they're, like, adding in and doing now are really strong. It's some of the kind of heritage things that they kind of inherited from the first release. Not so much. <laughs> it's good that you're conquering your neighbours. That means your people can start roaming around e Italy. Touché there, Sindarin Touché. Oh no, that wasn't Sindrin. That wasn't a Sindrin. My gosh, that was a Cool Science Slinky. I am so sorry. I associated that to the wrong person. Cool Science Slinky. Thank you very much for that. <laughs> oh, that was good. I saw the bits. I saw the pun. I immediately assumed Sindrin. Colthar, thank you very much for the follow. Welcome to the channel. Mon Gozor. And Ezra Burtz, thank oh, Ezra Roberts, thank you very much for the follows. Welcome to the channel. Dust Omni Smoney Monkeys, thank you also for the follows. Welcome to the channel. Okay, so I'm going to unpause because I'm kind of there. We go, hoping that that war ends so that I can take some more stuff from them. 
stay where you are. And I'm just going to take out the entirety of the Etruscans. It's going to cause me a massive amount of aggressive expansion, but this is a big old chunk of land that we're taking. And then from there, it's just consolidation and then taking out the little neighbours that we have around us. Cyro Cruz has actually grown quite significantly. That's impressive. How big are we compared to Carthage? Carthage population 953. We're still sitting at 783. Oh, there's manpower. We can see what they've got. Oh, no, we can't. Oh, that does actually require spies. Which we can't do yet because we don't have the technology for it. Doesn't show you the standing number of troops, though. It's just manpower. I guess you've kind of got to make an inference based on the number of population that they've got. When do you get the Punic Wars events and missions? Probably once I've taken Italy. I would imagine. I don't know for sure. <clears throat> it's a bit annoying that that covers. And that should fall... Automatically, because we have the provincial capital and it will automatically take the other regions in the province. And there we go, 100% war score, suing them for peace. We're going to take all of their things. 17 AE. This is acceptable. And there we go. Rome is definitely in the ascendant. So now what I'm going to do is send my levies home. And then we need another governor. Exciting times! So what region is this? This northern area. Cisalpine Gaul. Okay, so who are the candidates? I mean, there really is only the one. And that's this guy, the Harsh Polymath. He's still only 19. His statesmanship is improving. His marshal is still a bit low. But he's in charge of the smaller territory, so I think that's just fine. I think this works nicely. Okay, so we've got good governors in charge of everything. We've completed a couple more of the missions. And the Etruscans is now finished. Lucius Papirius Cursor gains popularity. Rome will get a Colonia up there. And now we need to make a decision. Do we want Volci, uh, Kosai, Lars Porcena, or Vetulonia, or Populonium? That is a good question. I have no idea where any of these places are. So, Kosai, here. So the benefit of Kosai is it's already a port. It's already a city, and it is farmland, so this place is going to be big. In fact, this probably is definitely one of the most populous places. It produces... Do, 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 do. What do you produce? Ah, wine. Or we could be Clusium. which is here. It is also a city. It is also in farmland. It has a smaller population and is not on the coast. So I'm not as thrilled about that. It's also horses, so vetoed. Then we've got... That's Eulonia. Which is here. It's already fortified. It has the same population level. It produces wine as well. It's already a city. Or Populonium.
which is just north of it, which is also a city, smaller population produces base metals. Base metals are quite useful. So the three choices, Kosei, Petulonia, or Populonium. We have a lot of tribesmen here. Gonna have to do some serious um, assimilation and promotion. Yeah, this is a very highly populated region. I suspect that our population has just risen by about 200. We may well be bigger than Carthage now. So Kosei is the most developed. It does have the highest civilization value. So out of Fetulonia and Kosei, my I would say Kosei. Out of Kosei and Populonium, that is a more difficult choice because this place does do base metals. And having a bigger supply of base metals I think would be pretty nice. We don't need more wine. Yeah, I'm thinking Populonium. Also, if that's fortified, it'll stop access to the island. Uh, the other thing I sh actually should say is Kosei is surrounded by a lot more farmland. So Kosei as a province, I think, can grow bigger. Also interesting that the current provincial capital is out there. It's got three farmlands to there. Two, three... Okay, they both got three. I think I'm going to make it into... Oh, you're only plains. You're not farmland. Okay, so I think that that may have just discounted these two. I think it's got to be Kosei. It's, it's just going to be the biggest. So we're going to say Kosei. Done. And we can do another mission. Destroy the Italian allies. That would declare war on all of our allies. Completing this task will give a large assimilation uh, penalty to assimilation speed and wrong culture happiness for 75 years. Um, no. I think we can quite happily do that peacefully. Thank you. Alright. Uh, armies have been sent home. We now have access to a third levy force. Which we will see once they've been integrated. Um, speaking of integrations, how do we decide that? It's here. Basically, anyone that is of citizen or higher gets integrated. So at the moment, I'm perfectly happy just turning everyone into Romans. Because we are just Roman Romanizing. Italy. So in that case I'm going to go to the government, no, to the national overview, provincial overview, and then we're going to say I want all of those provinces to be getting the assimilation 